All right, our next unit is gonna be on some techniques of integration, uh, mostly a technique called U-substitution, which is the reverse of chain rule. And to get ready for it, we're gonna make sure we feel good about our chain rule. Um, I'm gonna do, I think, three chain rule ones, make sure we still know how to do them. Um, this first one, we've got natural log of cosine of x, and we wanna do the derivative. It's asking us to do the derivative. So our outside function is natural log, and it's natural log of cosine of x, that's our inside function. The derivative of natural log of something is one over that thing times, <clears throat> we have to do the derivative of the inside function because of the chain rule. And the derivative of the inside function is negative sine of x. And uh, I can rewrite this as negative sine of x over cosine of x. Um, and if I really wanted to, I guess I could rewrite this as tangent of x. And notice this was the derivative, and so by doing reverse chain rule, by rewriting it kind of in this order, we're going to be able to find things like the integral of tangent of x, which we didn't know how to do. The antiderivative of tangent of x will be something of this form. Um, here we've got, um, this is 4 minus x squared to the 1 half power. And so when we do the derivative, we will get 1 half times 4 minus x squared, uh, oops, 4 minus x squared, to the, we lower the power by 1, so minus 2 over 2, so the negative 1 half power, times we have to do the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. So I'm going to simplify this. Uh, 2x over 2 is just going to be x over the square root, because it's the negative 1 half power, of 4 minus x squared. And this almost looks like one of those arc trig functions, except for this x on top. And we're going to be talking in a few days about how to tell the difference between them. But um, this is an another type of antiderivative we're going to be able to do. The last one I think I'll do is this tangent inverse one. So the derivative of tangent inverse is 1 over 1 plus x squared. But in this case, it's 1 plus this inside function squared times the derivative of the inside function. But in this case, the derivative of the inside function is just 1. So it's not going to do anything. And I can rewrite this as 1 plus, I'm going to square this binomial. Remember our squaring binomial trick is we square the first one, multiply these two together and double it, and then square the last one. And these two terms can combine. So 1 over x squared plus 6x plus 10. This is another type of antiderivative we're going to be able to use by rewriting it as an arctangent. All right, the next part involves you revisiting composite functions, because that's what we're going to have to do for this technique. And it asks you um, if you have a function h of x equals f of g of x, and you know the antiderivative of f of x and the derivative of g of x, um, we'll be able to do this antiderivative. So first it, it said to find h of x here. Um, the outside function, the one that we know the antiderivative of, is sine of x. And the inside function is e to the x. The integral of sine of x is cosine of x plus c. And the derivative is e to the x. That's just what we're doing here. We want to be able to do that for each of these. Okay. On the back, <clears throat> it wants you to um, find something of the form f of g of x times g prime of x. So there's an outside function. An inside function just like on the front side but we also need to find um, the derivative of the inside function somewhere and so here um, this is a little harder to see sometimes and I'll do two of these with you real quick it looks like the composite part is right here e to the x cubed right and then this guy's just kind of multiplying to the side well our f of x is going to be the part that's the outside function e to the x and our g of x, the thing that's inside of x cubed, the thing that's getting plugged in is x cubed. That's what's plugged in there. It's e to the x cubed power. The derivative of um, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and that's what's going on right there. And we can almost see that this is the reverse of a chain rule. The derivative of e to the x cubed is e to the x cubed times 3x squared. And we're going to be talking about how to do this next class. The last thing is it wants us to rewrite it as using the substitution. g of x is u, so this is u, and g prime of x is du, to rewrite it as e to the u. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to rewrite this as, um, instead of e to the g of x, it's going to be e to the u, 
and instead of times g prime of x, it's going to be times du. And this is going to be an easy integral we'll be able to do, and we'll work on that next class. I think I'll do one more with you guys just in case we're struggling on this. Here, uh, let's look at e here. So f of x, our outside function, is going to be x to the negative third because that's something we noted how to do the antiderivative of. And the thing that's to the negative third power is sine of x. If we plug that in, that's what we have here. We have sine of x to the negative third power. This is 1 over sine of x cubed. That's what's going on. And we have the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of sine of x is right there. It's cosine of x. And so we can rewrite this again by using the u substitution where g of x is u and g prime is du. <clears throat> this is u and so we've got 1 over u cubed times du. Or another way we often write this is u to the negative third power times du. Again, notice this is something we can take the integral of, and we'll be doing that next class. Um, hopefully you feel comfortable with these u substitutions. The basic idea is the inside function becomes a u. The derivative of it is the du because that's what happened in the chain rule, and we'll be going backwards from that. Um, I hope these two examples help.